Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Douglas. Welcome to UW 360. We're joining you from inside Lander Hall, where some incoming students at the UW are making an early and smooth transition to university life one month ahead of the pack. Early fall start offers students the opportunity to take a five credit month long summer course, as well as many social opportunities designed to prepare them for college. We'll tell you all about it a little later in the show. We'll also meet UW soccer sensation and former Sounders women midfielder Lindsay Elston. See what she's up to now. Plus, UW physics students have used Lego bricks to construct a miniature replica of the Large Hadron Collider, which was used to find evidence of the elusive Higgs boson in 2012. We'll show you the display. We'll meet the students who created it at the Physics Astronomy Building. And of course, we'll ask them why. And can technology give babies an intellectual jump start? We'll see how researchers at the UW have created online classes, even an app to explain brain development and help parents use that knowledge for their babies. But first, reporter Bob Branham had an opportunity to meet Dr. Alex Clues, a UW professor of surgery and vice chair for research in the Department of Surgery and director of the Clues Fund, which supports education, social services, and the fine arts. Dr. Clue's work has saved countless lives, and now he faces a heartbreaking struggle of his own, fighting inoperable cancer. He said Dr. Clues will be remembered for many facets of his complex personality. Dr. Alexander Whitehill Clues reads from a biography of his grandfather he's writing, a biography he is eager and determined to complete as soon as possible a man of science for all seasons. Alec Clues comes from a long line of New Englanders and doctors. His father was a surgeon and a sailor. His grandfather, a biochemist who helped in the development and distribution of insulin. When he was setting up this thing with the university. Healing others is in his DNA, although he didn't realize that early in his career. I said I was going to do nothing but science. But as I got into surgery and then into vascular surgery, I realized I did like the patient care and I simply liked taking care of people one by one. Over the years, his reputation steadily grew. His specialty was developing methods to treat a recurring problem following surgery on veins and arteries. Often those operations require stents to link the undamaged blood vessels together. But too often, the repair would not heal properly and the patient would face additional surgery. The condition is called stenosis, and it has always frustrated Alec Clues. One in three of those patients is going to get in trouble with this injury response of excessive scarring and re-narrowing of the reconstruction. And you can imagine how uh, distressing that is for both the patient and the physician if within one year of a reconstruction, you're back to square one. He tackled the problem, and his research has led to many advances, such as applying medicine to the stents to reduce the incidence of stenosis. You can't eliminate it, but you can reduce it and regulate it, and that was the goal. A titan. Yeah, within the field of vascular surgery, Alec Clues is a titan. His influence uh, goes far beyond the Department of Surgery, far beyond the Division of Vascular Surgery, into the school and into the community where we live. It is now the go-to place for the Northwest United States. You come to UW if you want the best vascular surgery. So I'm really enthusiastic about the future for this division because it's got dynamite people with smart ideas and it's using uh, clever uh, thinking about combining ideas and working at the interface. But the shades are now slowly being drawn on this remarkable life in the arts and medicine. He is in the twilight of his career and uh, is now facing his biggest challenge. After his long service, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of people that he has influenced. Dr. Alexander Clues is battling brain cancer. It's undergoing treatment. We're optimistic. We're hoping for success. But you never know. And you have to remember, Alex a Yankee. He's a New Englander. Uh, you know, you, you persevere. He's very, very um, realistic, I would say, about it. Uh, but also wants to get some things completed that he has wanted to do for a long time. A man of science for all seasons. In fact, that was the title of his, my father's lecture on the subject at Roswell Park Institute. 
including completing the biography of his grandfather of insulin fame, George H. A. Clues, Sr., and continuing his research in the advancement of genetics to aid vascular surgery patients. I would not like to die with a, a, a mind full of regrets. I would like to be able to deal with the issues that are still pressing me uh, in real time and do them before that moment comes. I think he has turned this into what else can I do so long as I am able to do things to continue to help humankind. Because he considers himself a medical investigator, that's how he refers to his students. So I'm very proud of the number of young uh, investigators I've trained over my over a long period of time, and that they, they in turn have been successful. Meantime, between treatments, he treasures his wife and grandchildren. We have three now, three girls, and it, it's a, really a joy of my life. Despite all his achievements and awards too numerous to mention, Dr. Alexander Whitehill Clues remains a modest man. Ben might want to comment on what he thinks uh, whatever I've done is worthwhile. <laughs> no, I think it, well, I... Dr. Ben Starnes, a colleague, now a close friend as well, considers his answer carefully. I think there's one word that, that can describe Alec Clues, and that's selfless. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Clues will continue to undergo treatment. When we come back, we'll catch up with UW soccer sensation and former Eastlake high grad Lindsay Elston and see how she's adjusting from college to the pros as UW 360 continues. UW 360's Husky Money Moment is made possible by the generous support of BECU. BECU more than just money. Hey there, I'm Austin, and welcome to the Husky Money Moment. Studying at the University of Washington is a massive undertaking, not just academically, but also financially. College is expensive, and tracking expenditures is a difficult process for someone who's never done it before, which is why here at the Hub today, Student Fiscal Services is offering incoming freshmen a chance to take Budgeting 101. In Budgeting 101, students are introduced to the basic concepts of budgeting and the UW resources that can help them. You ever go to a movie? No, never, never go to a movie. I know, it's too expensive. The UW has some pretty good deals on that, but we'll put it down. What Why did Student Physical Services decide to have a Budgeting 101 class? We are the office that deals with a lot of students and their financial problems because we send out the tuition bill. So we see a lot of students who have money problems. Plus, we also handle things like over awards and pass through loans. So, we felt as though it was important that we reach out to the students before they get in trouble. Came down to Budgeting 101 today because I think it's really important to know what you're doing with your money so you, end up, you don't end up in a lot of trouble later down the road. I don't want to be paying for school until I'm 50. Well, I'm interested in having my own budget um, and keeping track of my finances in college now that I'm living on my own um, and will be paying for my own food and my own transportation expenses, my books. It's something I want to do for myself and a skill I want to gain because it seems useful for life. It's really important that the students understand now that what the decisions they're making financially are going to affect them long term and that they need to be aware of how they're handling their money at this point in their life. Student Fiscal Services offers classes on borrowing, credit, and fraud, and they offer these classes to different groups all throughout the year. In the meantime, these students have walked away from Budgeting 101 with some goals of their own. I want to get a bike because I love the trails nearby and I love being outside and um, getting exercise and at the same time getting to my classes quickly. I want to save up money because I want to study abroad in Japan at least a month, maybe my junior year. So I want to start thinking about that now. Making a budget is like taking the reins of your own life. And Student Fiscal Services knows there's no time like being a freshman to take control. I'm Austin Seedentop and I'll see you next time.
Welcome back to UW 360 from stunning new Lander Hall. A former U.S. under-20 national teamer, Lindsay Elston, led the University of Washington to an NCAA bid, led the UW in goals, and played a key role with the Sounders women. A standout at East Lake High School in Sammamish, our own Erin Mayofsky caught up with Lindsay to see what she's up to now. Seattle is known for many iconic things, and right now, in the shadow of the space, you know some former Huskies are playing professionally, in large part because of the UW success in the women's soccer program. Lindsay Elston is a perfect example, a powerhouse forward, blasting goals for the dogs, setting all kinds of records at the UW. Now, after graduating early with a communications degree, Lindsay is still doing her talking on the field, leaving the purple and gold dogs for the professional Houston Dash. It's different, but I was ready to do something new, you know, like I had my four awesome years at UW and now it's, it, it was time for me to move on and I love, who I never thought I'd love wearing orange, but I actually do. She's a team player, she buys into her role with the team, she's willing to get out and do community service work and all those things that we, we ask our, our, our young pros to do. So she was a really good fit. On this night, Lindsay is back home in Seattle for the first time since turning pro in the newly formed National Women's Soccer League, a dream come true. Words can't describe what it feels like, but also to be here on my home field, a lot of fans coming out. I haven't seen my family for a while, but um, I don't know. It's just a truly indescribable feeling. The team's new, so a lot of the girls have just come in. They bonded. She's. Uh, a family in Houston invited them to stay at their house, so four of them are living together and it's, it's been kind of a nice setup. So she feels like you know, she almost has a family you know, down there already. It's been, it's been really uh, very exciting for her. But also exciting for the Pac-12 conference, which continues to pave the road professionally for the athletes. Right now, 28 players from the conference are competing in the NWSL. She does a great job, Lindsay can run at pace and cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. But play in a conference like the Pac-12, to play at a school like Washington and experience that kind of thing has made them resilient players that are able to go into professional situation and perform. I think the Pac-12 is one of the best conferences in the U.S. and it's awesome that you know they're producing talent and we get the opportunity to represent and keep playing. With women's soccer growing daily, no one reigns larger than former Husky and two-time gold medalist Hope Solo. I love playing with Kate Dinas. Um, you know, I, I didn't play with either one of them in college, but I'm happy now. I think we have four Huskies in the league, so obviously the, the program is, is building and the Husky program is building. Um, but four players, that's, that's a pretty good number, I'd say. The Pac-12 has put a ton of players into not only the leagues that we've had over the years, but our national team as well. Uh, you know, we've got a few on our roster from the Pac-12 uh, in addition to Lindsay. So uh, I think it's a, a great conference. We knew it, you know, from our, our years playing against it. And uh, it's a conference that should take great pride in its women's soccer. Uh, I mean, it's unreal. Just to even look up and see the Space Needle and to be home with the fans and my UW team was here out supporting me. It was just it felt really good, and I was, I was glad to be with my new teammates from Houston, too. So it was fun to combine both worlds. Lindsay suffered an injury with the Dash this year, but she hopes to return to the pitch 100% healthy next season. Okay, all you science fans, you probably already know all about the Large Hadron Collider. But do you know why University of Washington's physics students decided to replicate the collider using Legos? Producer Tess Kearney went to find out. In 2012, the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland made big news with the discovery of a subatomic particle called the Higgs boson. That discovery was a major step in understanding the origins of the universe, and University of Washington physicists had a key role in the research, including helping to build a collider's atlas detector. It's a giant circle, and it accelerates protons to speeds near the speed of light. And there's a number of detectors around the ring uh, to detect the protons when they hit each other. This is one of them, it's called ATLAS. 
University of Washington works on various aspects of it. University of Washington created roughly a third of these sort of wedge-shaped white wedges here. Through either end come these proton beams. In the very center, they collide with each other and produce tons and tons and tons of different particles that branch out everywhere. And so all of the various components here are built very specifically to measure aspects of the particles that result from the collision. Two years later, some UW students got the idea of building their own version of Atlas, only a lot smaller, and using Legos. About 25 people, including grad students and undergrads, as well as a few local high school students, built a model over several days. It took a long time. It took three or four uh, sort of events, and maybe something like 50, 60 man hours. Particle physics is awesome. Detectors are awesome, they're super cool, not just from the engineering, as you can see from the Legos, but the fact that something this big, it's roughly to scale with one of those Lego men, roughly. Something this big detects something so small, it's smaller than the size of a nucleus of an atom. That should be awe-inspiring, I hope. It's pretty, right? This is the first time a university in the Pacific Northwest has built a Lego model of the Atlas detector. Shi Chi Shu, an associate professor of physics at UW, plans to use the model for outreach to inspire interest in physics among all age groups. Sweet, you guys are so cool. While the real Atlas detector is about half the size of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, the Legos model is small enough to sit on top of an office desk. It's super fun and an awesome outreach opportunity. Still, Whalen says getting the model just right kept the students focused on their work. And the Legos turned out to be a very attractive element, he says, even for the graduate students. Kids like it, teenagers like it. I haven't met anyone who doesn't like Legos in some degree. And particle physics sort of traditionally is a little bit um, off-putting to people, but we think it's really cool. So we think with something like this, we can inspire kids and others to think particle physics is really cool too. The model will be on display in the Physics Astronomy Building on the UW campus, and it could be taken to events in places such as Seattle's Pacific Science Center. Eventually, it could be taken apart so that a whole new crop of students gets a chance to build it. Okay, yeah, you do. All right, there you go. The department hopes to use the LEGO display to broaden public interest in science and explain in lay terms some of the complicated problems they're trying to tackle. If you'd like to learn more, just head to our website, uwtv.org slash uw360. And when we come back, we take a look at another incredible program where UW researchers are offering ways for parents to better understand brain development in preschoolers. As UW360 continues. Welcome back to UW 360 from The Local Point, the fabulous new dining hall at Lander. Have you ever looked at a baby and wondered what he or she is thinking? New research shows babies aren't only thinking, their brains are moving at hyperspeed, getting ready to learn and talk. And now parents can take that research and use it to help their children get a mental jump start, all because of some amazing work being done at the University of Washington. Rick Garza reports. Yeah, this is the wheels on the bus. Ready? What's going on inside that cute little head? Do babies think and learn? And what can parents do to better understand and help their kids? So all of the latest research is really telling us that kids are just learning so much in their earliest moments. Sarah Roseberry Lytle is Director of Outreach and Education for the Institute of Learning and Brain Sciences at the University of Washington. We study child development, in particular child development, over the first five years of life. Yeah. Which research points to being the most important learning and development years of all. So all the time when, we, when we're coming up with this new scientific research about what's going on um, during a child's first five years, we really want to get it out to the public. One method is a series of free online outreach modules to teach everything from the importance of early interactions to understanding emotions. And we really believe that parents want the best for their children and they're hungry for information about early childhood development. 
Amy Barlay is a program specialist with Save the Children. The work that iLabs is doing has helped us immensely in our um, development of our home visitors. Because we work in rural communities, it's often hard to access the latest and greatest in brain research and bring it to the communities. And the idea is that these online training modules are accessible anytime, they're free to access, and you know they're available to people whenever they have time to access them. Where's the caboose? There's a couple. There's a Parents know that understanding the needs and wants of infants and toddlers can be trying and frustrating. So getting free expert help could make a huge impact on parents and child connections. Raising happy, healthy children is really about relationships. And the iLabs modules talk about relationships. They're based on relationships and the things that you can do as a parent or a grandparent or a teacher that help a child and in the context of a relationship how much learning can happen. And they add that teaching and learning isn't about expensive toys or learning devices. It's just about one-on-one -on -one interaction and when it works you'll know it. The UW researchers' goal is to create 50 to 60 learning modules over the next five years. When we come back, we jump from babies to teenagers and learn about a program that enables students to adjust to college life a full month early as UW 360 continues. Welcome back everyone. Here in Lander, the new freshman residence hall, adjusting to college life can be a bit perplexing for incoming students. Leaving home for the first time, new surroundings, new friends, new challenges. To make that adjustment easier, the University of Washington offers EFS Early Fall Start. Incoming freshmen can start classes a month early in August, earn credits, and get a jump start on the academic school year. Austin Seedentoff explains. Move-in day. Chaotic, exciting, and stressful. These freshmen are taking their first steps into the UW and their first glances around their new home. It's a startling feeling to think that every time you lock eyes with someone, you may be meeting a lifelong friend for the first time. Is this your first time living out of China? Mm, not first time, not but first time. the first time alone. I remember when I first moved into UW as a freshman. It was a bewildering, exciting, and ultimately defining experience for me as a student. The first few months of school can have a lot in store for students, which is why the students here in Lander Hall today have elected to move in a month early for early fall start. Hello. Hi. Austin, nice to finally meet you. Hi, thank you. Today is Kayla Sears' first day of EFS and her first day of her new life at the University of Washington. Yes, I am really nervous about starting college, but at the same time, I'm really exciting. Um, I've been hearing a lot that college is the best time in your life, that you won't regret any of it, or you'll have fun. So I'm really nervous, but really excited. So you're making the best guess about what's out there. One of the coolest parts of EFS is the variety of exciting classes you can choose from, which is why we decided to check in with Kayla a couple weeks later in her chosen class, Neurobiology of Perception. Okay. So we were talking about illusions earlier today and what the cause of illusions is. This was the same class I had from my early fall start, and I even had the opportunity to give a guest lecture. I created what's called a Gonsfeld, and to do that I took a ping pong ball and cut it in half around its circumference and put one ping pong ball over each eye and stared into a lamp. It's so much better than the other classes that I teach. The students are all new, they're fresh, they're enthusiastic, they're smart. I typically get really smart students in this class and that makes it a lot of fun to teach. It's not just conveying information about a topic to the students. They're learning about what it's like to be at the University of Washington for the first time. So they're learning about all of the resources that are available. They're learning about where things are on campus. They're forming friendships that may last way beyond early fall start. I feel like I'm always doing something every day. Either hang out with friends, make, meeting new people, 
doing homework, and I feel like it's a good thing for me, and starting to feel like the college life here at UW. The girl with the long red hair. Yeah. I love these lounges. I would just, you know, grab my laptop and go to a random lounge and just do my homework and at the same time meet new people. I mean, I really like to have intelligent conversations with people and being able to talk all night. That's what I really like. And you got your printer to actually work? Yep. Just the things that give them, as they say, a head start when the other students come in and are clueless. So they can basically be the leaders once the regular class comes in. And I think that's a very empowering experience for students who've already spent four weeks here in a class. Being in a EFS class has definitely prepared me for the upcoming school year. Looking back at my early fall start, it was one of the most important months in my college experience. And it pushed me just far enough out of my comfort zone that I was ready to take the start of the year in stride. And it looks like this batch of students is going to be just as prepared. I'm Austin Seedentoff, and I'll see you next time. EFS provides students not only the opportunity to get a jump start on their academic path, but also a chance to begin learning campus culture, making connections, and exploring all that the University of Washington offers. That does it for this edition of UW 360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington.